Now I have your attention, the Zoning Board of Appeals for August 6, 2019 will now come to order. Please call the roll. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting, July 16th, 2019? Okay. Motion made by Mr. Counter, seconded by Ms. Curley. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, the first case this evening will be case number 9897, 1 State Street. Petition of Bank of America by its representatives. Ms. Bono and Associates, Sheila Craig. That's me, thank you. I've made uh, three sets of the packages to show you and put them on boards for your use. This might make it easier to go through. So we are in this one State Street branch is in a CBD zone, which no longer allows a drive-through at a bank branch. But this was built at a time when you could have a drive-through. So the existing bank has a drive-through that comes off of Market Street. You can see yeah. right here. And it's a very busy drive-through. Um, I went today to stake it out, and I took some photos to show you what um, sort of sketchy photos that show you tape laid out where the new drive-through will be. So this is, what we are proposing to do is to add, oh, I should introduce my colleague. <laughs> this is um, Roger Bodhi from CBRE. Um, so this is a new island with a new ATM, and this is new striping. What you see shaded here is existing landscaping. So we're taking that landscaping out back to here and adding a new drive-through here. And I think you take a look at it. So that tree will be gone? No. The tree can stay. The tree will stay. This is existing. This is proposed. This is existing from the south side. And this is proposed. So you can see the tree is still there. Just in the time, um, this is, these are photos that I just took. So this shows, I don't know if you can see it or not, but can you see the yellow stripe on the ground? Yeah. That's all right. So that just gives you an idea of where we'll be cutting back, where we'd like to cut back. And that, so inside that area, the new drive through will be there. My very good clients. Oh, thank you. Glad you feel that way. Well, Bank of America is a very good client of ours. So we want to do a good job. But this, uh, it's we um, we really want to maintain that tree. We don't want anything to happen to that tree. It's a gorgeous tree. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. I so, saw that I read someplace that it was coming down. That's why I got. No, not nothing that I submitted. And if you can see in the photos, just in the time that I was there, the traffic stacks quite a bit in that one drive through So we're looking to alleviate that stress on that lane. People, my colleague, when she went to measure this space, said it's the busiest Bank of America branch she's ever been in. So there's a, it's got a lot of traffic here. People need to get cash to go spend it at Zimmons, I think. <laughs> What's that? Is that going to have an ATM too? It's going to be an ATM. Just ATM or both? There are going to be two ATMs, the one at the building and the new one on the island. So there won't be a drive-up window to the building and an ATM in the drive It's now. a drive-up ATM. So there will just both ATMs. two ATMs then? Yes. Are you guys also going to do the planting or just the architectural? 
Um, we are, we're responsible for both. And we're planning on maintaining the existing landscaping and the existing trees. Is there a and way to move the less mulch? Because I think they always catch on fire when they hold people's cigarettes. Really? Yeah, is there a way to move the trees? We can do that. Okay, we can yeah, we can definitely. Thank you. It's not very good for public mulch. It's not the best thing. Okay. Public settings. Okay. It, it's a discussion we'll have to have with the landlord. It's outside of our lease. Okay. So uh, we can pass that along. Yeah, we'd be willing to do that though. Mm -hmm. Do some mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> school, we this goes. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty clear to everybody then what the objective is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any other questions of the board right now? I know. It's a pretty good presentation. Board have any other questions? Seeing that, thank you very much. Okay. Seeing that there are none, I'll now open the floor for anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition. You guys can take your seats. Okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Seeing that there are none, I'm going to close it for those in favor. Is there anybody here in opposition to this petition? Anybody here in opposition? Seeing that there are none, I'll now close the hearing for those in opposition. What is the wish of the board? Second. Motion <coughs> made by Mr. Cowan, seconded by Mr. Cole. Please call the roll. Pursuant to grant, uh, motion to grant. Motion to grant. I have a motion to grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Curley? Well, I'd like that motion to grant to say that the tree has to stay. That means I just want a stipulation that the tree is going to stay. Yes to grant. Yes. Mr. Gallon? Yes, to grant. And so on. With the stipulation of the tree. Yes, to grant. Petition granted. You're welcome. The next case this evening is case number 9892125 Gardner Street. Petitioner Arthur Dulong III and Karen Dulong to allow the division of an existing non-conforming lot in a general residence district with less than the required area to create a more non-conforming lot. Created, created lot to be combined with property at 127 Gardner Street. Pictures and everything? Yeah, I do. I get the whole. I have the whole sheet matched on my script. It was very good, well put together. Thank you so much. Not as big as the ones that you just saw, but. No, you don't need that. That's fine. So, um, we own 127 Garden Street. We bought it from my parents who own 125 Garden Street. My parents, are, our parents, are both now deceased. Um, there is a right of way from 125 over the driveway of 127. Uh, we would like to separate the property line, which now is um, in favor of 125, which uh, the property goes out to the back fence and then turns left behind 127. So we'd like to straighten the property line between the two houses on the right of way and provide parking for both homes and behind the house. Yeah, now let me use the people drive. Excuse me. Makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the language of non-conforming, more non-conforming, non, uh, less non-conforming yeah. is a little confusing, but we do get that idea. That's confusing. Yeah. It's a good way out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's really, it, it's being in fear to one. Yeah. 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 So we intend as a family to be selling the property at 125. Yeah. So we need to get this settled if we can prior to that. Yeah. There had been actually a, a driveway <laughs> on the right-hand side of 125, but the school um, took land during more time to house soldiers in the school, so that driver was actually eliminated. But there were no soldiers left. No. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there any other questions from the board? No questions from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you. Since there are no questions from the board, I'll now open the floor for anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition.
Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? No? Jim does not. I'll close it. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition of this petition? Anybody in opposition? Seeing that there's none, I'll close the floor for those in opposition. What's the wish of the board? I'll make a motion to grant. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Cole, seconded by Ms. Curley. Please call the roll. Mr. Fairwitz. Motion to grant. Grant. Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Curley? Yes. Mr. Kellman? Yes. And Mr. Dishon? Yes, to Grant. Dishon granted. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. Um, Mary, what we'll do is we'll just bounce back and forth in this case with the associates. What we'll do is I'll just go back and forth in this case. So that was yours. That's going to be his. We'll, no, just so you guys, I wasn't even, sometimes I don't even think about that. So it's coming to the end and I'm like, crap, I never said that. I figured it out. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. The next case this evening will be um, case number nine eight eight seven one ten Mariana Street. By, um, petitioner Joseph Sokola by the Attorney John Myos to permit the alteration of a pre-existing non-conforming three-family structure. Previously granted in variance in 1939 by allowing the modification of the exterior of the building in an R1 district. I believe there's a letter here yeah. to, to continue this. Yeah, right. Dear yeah. Mr. DeSano, the petitioner respectfully requests that this matter be continued to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Appeals. The reason is this. The reason for this request is that the architect has not completed the drawings of the third floor for us that we requested. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. Um, what is the wish of the board? Motion to continue. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Cole, seconded by Ms. Curley. Call the roll to continue till, what do we continue until? We are continuing until September um, 17. Okay. 17? Yes, yes. ma'am. Mr. Wilton to continue? Um, yes, to continue. Mr. Cole to continue? Yes. Mr. Cole to continue? Yes. Mr. Gallon to yes. continue? Yes. And Mr. Sullivan to continue? Yes. Okay. Um, the next case this evening will be case number 9888, um, 3840 Reed Street. Petitioner Jean Catherine Wren by attorney Sam Vitale um, to permit the alteration of a pre existing non conforming two, two and one half story building previously used as a three family dwelling, a lot with less than the required area in an R4 apartment house district. Finding that such use is not substantially more detrimental in effects on the neighborhood. We are not reopening this case. Um, I believe there was some discussion about a motion to um, reconsider, to withdraw without prejudice. Do I have a motion? Well, first we have to vote you. Right. I want to inform the board that I've dropped my notice of intent to receive reconsideration in view of the fact that they're going to uh, they want to withdraw without prejudice. Why are you mad? Do you know why they want to withdraw without prejudice, sir? Yes, just, I, I beg the board's indulgence for one minute. I'll give you a quick aside. When I was in high school, Walter Bolverini was my first aid teacher. Me too. And I thought the first rule he taught me was stop the bleeding. Then I got a little older and I learned the physician's first rule was do no harm. And so I want to apologize because I think I did harm to Mrs. Ring. And so uh, I feel responsible uh, once she understood that if it was denied, she couldn't come back for two years, in the sense that she was worse off than she had been prior, and, and she vacillated. No, no, no reflection on any of the board. It was a very emotional time for her. Uh, her husband's ill, you saw her husband was here. Her, her children are being evicted, and so uh, 
I gave her an opportunity to choose door A. She chose not to choose door A. And then two days later, she told me she chose door A. And I said, the door may be closed. And so I explained that to the secretary. I, I talked to Mr. Callan um, because I know he had a concern about the staircase. But right now, I'm just trying to go back to square one, where at least I haven't made them worse off than they were. Uh, and if they, I think if they understood it, Mrs. Ring came to City Hall, talked with Mary, talked to the ISD, left here in tears because she then understood that she had done, some, she thought she had done something wrong. And, and I don't think Mrs. Ring has done anything wrong. If there's responsibility for confusion, then I, I accept that responsibility and I would just ask you so I can at least abide by the rule of doing no harm, that you at least allow to, uh, to withdraw uh, and perhaps there's a grown son who's a neighbor. There are two older daughters. I talked to Councilor Walsh. And hopefully we can fashion a solution that everybody uh, can live with and go forward. But I don't want to make it worse. And I think I did. Well, I don't think you made it any worse. I mean, it's all family. All family can live in a, three, in a, in a two family house, even though it's. Um, it, well, I, I could have done it differently. I could have come in here and said, I want to convert a two family to a three family on a 13,000 square foot lot. I didn't do that because I relied on what I thought the records reflected and what people told me. But there, there's certainly more than one way to do it. And my concern is that, did I choose the wrong way and therefore uh, hurt their chances? And so I, I hope that's not the case. I hope the board uh, does reconsider and allow them to withdraw. They're no better off, they're no worse off. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Callan, did you initially, a few minutes ago, did you say that you were withdrawing your request? Yeah, yeah. Well, we so we're not, so how do we get this case back open again? Well, no, I didn't, I said it was my and then I couldn't, I could drop it anytime. Oh, well, hold on, I understand this, so if you drop, drop the reconsideration. So I did, I dropped it. Right. I, I'm not questioning that, I'm just, what I'm saying is, how do we get the case, how do we get it open again? It never was the case, my intent. Right, so, the 20 day, uh, my, my intent didn't interfere with it. So is it dead? So it's dead then. See, you know, what my point is, if we're not reconsidering, we voted, we have voted, we've denied it. We've denied it. So I don't see how we, how we get, how we go back to, to, to square one ourselves without a reconsideration. Even though, quite frankly, the only reason why I would have reconsidered it is to allow them to uh, withdraw without prejudice because I'm not changing my mind on a free No, I, am, I didn't ask anybody to change their mind on the original vote. I just think that um, I explained, if you remember that night, I had many cases on. In fact, you called one case and I couldn't find my yep. cards were over there. I never had a chance to tell Mrs. Wren. Yeah. If you remember, she sat there crying. She left the next day, okay? I, I had an opportunity and I, I called her and explained it. And I said, these are the procedures of the board. I don't know what's going to happen. Then I think the clerk called me and said, um, that re reconsideration might be considered if she said yes with respect to a staircase. I called her, it was like a Friday yeah. afternoon. She said, no, 8.05 on Monday morning I had a call and she called me again and she said, I've been sick all weekend, I made a mistake, I, you know, I talked to my daughters and she apparently, because I didn't call her at 8.05, I called her like at 9.30, she already come to City Hall, talked to the people at ISD, talked with Mary, left here in tears because they told her rightly that if your petition's denied, you can't come back for two years. I had to then explain to her yeah, if there was a material change, what's a material change? I went through all of that, okay? And so uh, she felt badly, I felt badly because I thought I had failed to communicate to her what the implications was given the circumstances I thought I had, I had done that the following day. But even then, uh, she may have heard it but not listened quite carefully. So she came here on her own, unknown to me, and spoke with people at ISD and the administration office then came upstairs and saw uh, your clerk, um, and that's when she said she regretted what had happened, okay? So I said, well, I can't control, the board has its own procedures. 
If the board elects to do that, the only way I say that you could come back with the same proposal, okay, is if you uh, were allowed to withdraw without prejudice. Otherwise, I explained to her there's a procedure, how you can come back with a material change, what it takes to, get, to exercise that procedure, and, and so, I'm, as I said, I don't want to make her necessarily better off, but I don't want to make her worse off because I made a mistake. But three days is three days. Again, I, I don't know what the three days. Three days to withdraw. You have Wednesday, Thursday. I never asked to withdraw in, that, in the three days. It was put to me about um, would she uh, agree to a particular condition? Okay, that, no one put to me about withdrawing in no, those three the days. No, consideration is we have three days. That doesn't mean Monday morning. That means Friday afternoon. I can't withdraw a petition, okay? I didn't ask for a petition to be withdrawn in three days or in four days or in five days. I, I, I never asked that, okay? I'm just saying to you that when I explained to her what her alternatives were, I gave her other alternatives, okay? She vacillated one day, changed her mind. My wife's a woman, they can change their mind. Men can change their minds. She changed her mind, okay? And then I said, all I, but I didn't know, unbeknownst to me, she came here and talked to other people, okay? And then she was more upset. So right? Sam, Sam, let me help. I, I, think I, can, I, can, I think I can help the board here. She, she reached out, it, it wasn't Sam that reached out. Um, the petitioner reached out directly and wanted to know what she could do and because she wanted to understand why you know it, it couldn't be reconsidered and i said you, you you've unfortunately missed that period you would have had a that, that deadline was friday you know for that to happen and this was i think maybe tuesday mary um i was having this conversation and 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 i and i suggested i said you know she goes well can i withdraw and i said well we would have to open we would have, that would have to be a motion that would have to be made to, to reconsider, you know, the case to withdraw. And I think I might have said that without speaking to legal. So I might, if I've spoken out of turn and we are not allowed to make a motion to reconsider to withdraw without prejudice, then I might have spoken with out of turn and we would have to probably check with legal to see if we're allowed to do that. I don't know. So this might, I don't think this is Sam's, uh oh, this is probably a little bit more mine for even making the offer when I didn't know. No, it's perfectly legal the way I'm doing it. Because I didn't tell Mary I wanted to leave. I said I was opposed to intent. Right. Which I, you know, withdrew that notice. And uh, I'd like to make the motion to grant the petition to withdraw without prejudice. Well, I don't think it's this over. is legal. Yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke to Attorney Lamana. And he said to me, there's no such thing as intent, and there's no such thing as the law of the rules. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Because yeah. I, I want to I know understand. where I stand, because I've been on this board. I how many did you see, but I know a lot about it. I used to be a common theory. Well, he is the city lawyer. Yeah, I know. This is, this is a, the, the woman should be allowed to withdraw, which you know is the other thing. Well, but three days. That's what Attorney Lamana said to me. Three days is three days. Right. Well, so here, here's. I have one question yep. for you, Attorney. Uh, you can come back in within two years if it's, if it's substantially or different than what, what was originally proposed. You can come back. Right. And we basically did not approve of her plan that was submitted. So. But it takes, in order to do that, you have to go to the planning board. Yeah. And they have to make a determination that there's some material change. And then it's still, even if they agree, it still has to come back here and you have to agree. That's right. That, I mean, that's how I understand the procedure. That's what I described. And so, so there is a path. Without, there, is a, there is a legal path for her to come back in within two years, potentially. Planning board and then back to us. Right. And but, I think that's a better path than asking us to take a vote. When, I, I don't think we can take a vote on this. I, at, at this point now, I, with, with, the, with the way the board feels, I think there's more that feel that they're not even willing to vote tonight. I think we'll put this case aside. We'll put this, this aside right now. I'll, what I'll do, Sam, is I'll speak with, you know, the attorney with Ms. LaMotta, and then I'll either, me or Mary will 
connect with you with, yeah, with what you he said. Yeah, I think because I didn't, the chapters I didn't know. Right, and, and like I said, this might be a little bit my doing too, and, and I was just, you know what I mean? Yeah. She had me, she had me, and there was nothing I could do. So I was, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I, I don't see any harm in that, but I, I might have promised something I couldn't, couldn't provide. So if that's the case, we'll deal with it, but we'll just, we'll just put it on hold for yeah. right now. All right? Thank you. The next case this evening is um, case number 9890-426 Boston Street. The petition of Pedro Bellotto by his Maldonado. attorney, Maldonado by his attorney Sam Vitale, to permit the alteration to the exterior of the mixed-use non-conforming structure to allow the addition of a new exterior stair, amending previously filed approved plans in case 9815. What we'll do, Mary, is what was going to the, the associate that was going to sit on the Reed Street case will sit on this case, okay? And just not to confuse you guys. Reed Street didn't happen, so what was going to sit for Reed will sit for this one. Sorry if I messed you guys up. Yep. Okay? I believe, Mr. Chairman, the last time you couldn't find the copies of the plans. I think them. I gave Mary, yep. like, sort of before and after. Yep. And the reason we're here is that. Um, and I think I gave a copy of the last meeting of, to the board of the communication from Mr. Ennis who said that the plan should be amended. You've already approved uh, the, the, the mixed use of this property, which was a private garage and the residences, and uh, we wanted to fulfill, and there was another requirement I think I told you about, which we have fulfilled, which is they needed, and I think I asked you if you wanted them, we had the mechanicals, the plumbing, all of those. That, that was the building department issue. Then I think Mr. Callan raised an issue with respect to um, the exterior staircase and then closing that. Uh, and I did inquire, because I admitted I didn't know whether you needed a foundation or a footing, as I've been told. And I think that it can be done to enclose that staircase that's on the side of the building, which would, I think, uh, address the concern that uh, Mr. McCallan had about. Do you have a plan for that? There's a, the, the big plan was filed with that. Uh, staircase and that we, we can enclose the staircase I understand they got to put a footing not a foundation yeah and so uh, the builders here but I think that at that time um, he was talking that when you questioned it about covering it from the second floor down he understood that you wanted it enclosed yeah and, that, and that we're agreeable to that condition we're absolutely agreeable to that condition but I don't see anything in fact, the plan that you've got before us tonight is not a proper plan. Which, well, there's two sets of plans. One was prior, excuse me? It should be the original plan that was approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals on a residential use plan. Correct. And the other one was just needed from the above because Right, and that, we, that's that set I gave okay. to you. But that plan should have been revised to show what, what is the revision, which is the stairway. And then the second part, set of plans is Mr. Reed did a plan that showed the staircase. It's dated June 19th, I think. That yeah, it doesn't show. In other words, it's a totally different plan. It should be the original, was voted on here by the Zoning Board of Appeal, as approved. It should be revised to include that sale. You understand? Don't you play here about empty space? That was a revision that should have been on the original plan, and I don't see that. All right, what we did is gave you a set of what was then and what is now. And then we gave you a plan of read showing the now with the staircase. So you want one set of plans. All right. I mean, because, again, I, I don't pretend to know something about the building code, but I know that we've agreed to do it, and I thought I had presented the, plan, the two sets that I was provided before and after. I haven't seen a plan uh, uh, on that, but uh, Sam, do you have the the rear elevation of the new plan of the, yeah, the plans that they've, they've they've completed, they've worked on? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, it shows the same Right there. Yeah. I think it shows. Okay, I have to put my glasses on. Um, it shows the elevation. Yes. Well, this staircase is supposed to be on the inside of the building. How do you get on the outside? 
It can be an easement, but in terms of we negotiated a release of an easement that was a right of way that was off Boston Street, we exchanged easements. There was a right of way off Boston Street that was five feet wide. We still could put the staircase on our land, but we gave away an easement at the top of the land so that the property at the rear of the abutter with a park could access the property that's on Boston Street by crossing over this piece of land. So in exchange for giving up what both of them had off Boston Street and granting the easement at the top corner, that exchange did that. As the building progressed, Roger said that the staircase, the staircase wasn't on the original plan. Can I stop you right there? The agreement was that they, that they would swap, they would extinguish their right away on, on the Winthrop's property. Uh, yeah, and, and that was recorded. Right. But we don't own that portion at the rear that goes out, that the city of Lynn has that. Yeah, look at that. That, that showed on the original plan. No, I have the plans. I have them right here. I have Mr. Reed's original plan, right. his current plan, and um, the deed my client owns 75 feet from Boston Street to the rear. Yes, I understand. There's 7.4 feet from that point to the abutting building. That 7.4 feet is encumbered by the city of Lynn has an easement for the box culvert. That's right. And it, uh, to allow yeah. Strawberry Brook to run in underneath and they, yeah. can, they can maintain it. Yeah. That runs along between the two buildings down and across Federal. That's a dark ring over by the legal. It's, yeah, it, right, it's, a, it's underground. Yeah. And, but with respect to the staircase, the staircase. Um, Sam, um, these are the drawings you just handed, and you know, I'm I do pretty good with the drawings from time to time. Can you show me where the stairs are on these drawings? Sure. I don't. Yeah, they should them. be on the new set of plan. Uh, yeah, I thought we had blown up this yeah, plan from yeah, the page A two or something. Yeah, I just there's no. Oops. We, I think we brought this the last time. Yeah, over here. So this is on A2. I think it is A2. That's very much M2. what you, this that's very much what you oh, see. Oh, that's a mechanical it. plan. Right. Okay. The one I saw, I think, was on yeah, A2. That, that plan's not in there. So. That's very much what you can see now when the building is done. The stairs discharge into my own land on the back. And it's basically on the second, from the second floor down to the, to the main floor. That is the first floor. So what you... It's going to change the whole rear elevation, right? No, you that doesn't have not in the rear. It's along the side on the. Not to do with elevations in there. It's, it's on the. It's on, it's, on. it's on the along the side of the building, not the rear. Correct. So it's going to come down between the between your building and the Hibernian. Line. Line. It, right. Yeah, it's going to come down in parallel between the two buildings. Correct. No, no, what? The no, 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 no. That's oh, no. the other end on the on the it's on, on the Boston Street. This is on Boston Street. Street. Yeah. Correct. If we face in the building. That's very much the way this is. That's Street, yeah. That we have on the gas station this. Yeah. I mean, this is the empty lot. This and is the building. And it's just a big, it's just a big, for lack of a better term, a big fire escape metal staircase. No, it's actually an OPT and. It's a staircase. Stair so it's a real wood staircase. Correct. Not closed in at all? Well, my intention was not to. Just give it a better look, but if that's something that he wants to. To see it close, I don't see a reason why not to do it. I've always been against those exterior stairs. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're I'm not disagree with you because that's what you want to do it. I'm just telling you, you don't have yeah. support unless you close it. And I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm not against it. Why? Why? Yeah. I'm yeah. here to work with you guys. I just want to make it. Right, so we can get you a plan. First, first of all, I'm talking now so nobody else is. Where are the drawings that we that you guys provided to us showing the staircase on the side? Oh, of the it's building? in there. It's on the on the small, but it's there. Let me show this. Let me, let me, let me. Okay. Right in here. It will look the plan. Page number two have the stairs coming on the inside, but on the same spot. The only difference they come out on the same exactly spot. The only difference is that right now I'm sending this from the second floor window down to the ground. Right now, you're not going to see any difference. The only difference are 
the stairs on the side of the building, on the exterior. Which I have no objection to doing that, but it's closed. That's fine. Right. Right yeah, right. It has to be enclosed because it snows out. All the fish up, all the snow is going to land. I mean, I don't know. We would be glad to do it. I, I, I tell people that. I have no problem to close it in. That's that's not an issue in my hand. Okay, Mr. Light, tell you another item is the property was never surveyed and striped like we always want people to do it. Show us where the property line is and where everything is. That was never done. But we don't know as far as the staircase how close it's going to be to. We'll have repaid the line. What? I'll have Mr. Reed paint the line. Yeah, paint the line all around from Boston Street, all around from Federal Street. And paint them, paint them the easements, too. Mr. Reed's away. I tried to reach him. He's on vacation. Um, but he's done, a, I know he did the most recent plan. It was June 19th of this year. He's done two plans that they had before, one that showed um, where the property line ends and the other one that showed the city of Lynn's uh, color. So this is the staircase That's you're talking about, right? And the, these, these are happening, or these are not? One. The one, second one, one is top. happening? Correct. That one got... Where are those on this? This actually is, uh, is what you see in here. That's that. Okay, and where, where are the other two then? That doesn't have to have it on. That's a, set, that's a third door that I don't want it in. That's the egress that is required by building. So you're changing these? You're, I'm not you're changing not, that. You're not doing, you just said you were, you were not doing this door and these uh, stairs. Right, if I have to put those, I don't have to, that goes to the kitchen, but I don't need to have those in. I didn't. So I don't you, need so to you're, have you're, What you're telling me I is, only, It's only up all day. Let me finish up before you talk over me. And you do have to do what you say you're gonna do. You just can't arbitrarily change the drawings if they're approved through zoning. Samuel can bring you out the hallway and explain that to you if you like. That's fine. But what I'm saying is it's required by building to have egress, and I am compliant I'm, with I'm egress. I'm not talking about But if you want to have a set of stairs yeah, that, that is not going to be used last, that's fine. Well, yelling at is not going to get to anywhere. So we'll stop. That's fine. We're if we're that's what you want to do, let's stop this right now. Let's call it done. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm giving you the, exactly the original approval. Forget about the stairs. I was just asking questions, Sam. Well, I'm just saying it. I'm, I'm asking you. No, the only asking. reason we came is that they wanted you to see a plan. We presented that plan. The question was to enclose the staircase. We're prepared to enclose let's the staircase. Let's go to the original approval and then the we'll call it nine. enclose the staircase. If you want a plan of the enclosed staircase, we'd be glad to give it to you. It's just that this is like I told you how we got to where we're at. And how we got to where we're at was the building department said, you need to show the, where the staircase is. When we did show you where the staircase was, Mr. Callan said he wanted it enclosed. We, then he's agreed to enclose the staircase. If you want to see a plan with that enclosed staircase, we'll give it to you. What about the striping? Excuse me? What about the striping? Mr. Callan just asked for that now. I know. Uh, but I know for a fact, because we have two surveys, actually by two different surveyors, okay, that show us that that staircase is on the land of the petition. How about we how about we'll continue this till, till they do what we're looking for? Yes, that's all. Yeah, Mr. Reed is away. I mean, I tried to reach him, but I got I, I can only rely yeah, on what he gives me. Let's go back to the original approval. I'll forget about the stairs on the outside. I'm a, I'm a contractor. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Might make you happy. That's fine. Let's, no, hold on. Let's do it this way. Let's go back to the original approval. I'll go ahead and reframe the stairs. No, 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 I understand, but let's put it this way. Make it simple and easy. That's what I explained. So, that, so what we're going to do is, he's trying to make it simple and easy. We'll ask Mr. Reed, as I understand it, we need two things. We need Mr. Reed to draw a line so you know that the, the stairs are within that property. Is that, is that right? to strike it and strike the areas where the easements are, the right-of-ways. Well, there's plans on record at the Registry of Deeds. There's a plan, recorded plan. No. They, they have this plan is recorded at the Registry of Deeds in detail. It shows where. What plan? So this plan is part of the easement that was granted. It was recorded at the Registry of Deeds. It's a public document. Does that, does, that stay, does that one have the staircase on it? 
No, because when we did the swap, it was in 2000. Yeah, can I say that point? Yep, 18. I can get you the actual recorded one if you give me a minute. Well, let me find the recorded plan and the deed. Because it pertained to the land that we owned, that we gave up. The board approved that plan. I'll show you those two points. I think what the board needs to do is look at its plan. I'll tell you what, here's, here's, here's what here's the 2018 plan. Hold on. Here's what the board is actually going to do. What we're going to do is, you guys, you guys came in here because you wanted to make some changes. We've already made approvals for you. So if you want to make those changes, just, just do what we're requesting. If you don't want to make those changes, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull a motion to withdraw right now. Will you guys can leave. Withdraw. I'm going back to the original approval. I think that's, smart. that's That's what I'm going to do. And you're going to have to leave with EDA because I'm going to have a fence going back on that property. I tried my best to work with you guys on this. It was not possible. I thought we filed the plan. Sam, I don't, I'm just, I'm well, not, I don't, I'll have to do ask a question. Yeah, you know. <laughs> this this hey, plan right here. Oh, Mr. Vitale, this guy just made a statement. I wanted it. So the board will understand. He's going to put a fence back where it don't belong. Well, I don't know about that. Well, well I understand it. Just said well, that. again, the only people that can tell me where it belongs is the board. All, all, all the master plans are continuations to we start. I'm not going to continue this. I, I'm at this point. I'm, I'm asking the board to withdraw this. I'm going back to the original approval. And I am going to have my framers to go back in there, deck the stairs, reframe the stairs in the same spot. And I'm going to give you the same face, the same exact fence that you had there for the many years. Okay. That's what makes Mr. Calvin, how about this? I'll make a motion right now, deny it, and we can end this whole thing. Second the motion, we'll call a roll, deny it, and you can be on his way. Well, you're saying we don't need to do it, we do need to do it. I'm not I was just asking questions about the conflicts in the drawings, and if, if, well, if, if it's too hard to answer, I mean. I, I, I think the drawing speaks for itself. This plan is dated originally January 22nd, 2018. It was revised January, uh, June 24th, 2019. It shows the staircase. So that was the plan originally, with, now with the staircase added. So then the next question is, in closing, if you want to plan that, I, Mr. Reed didn't draw that, he just drew where it was. Just on the plan. Question, how did you get here before right. us? The building department determined that. They said they wanted to see a plan. Changes made to the original they wanted to see it. So that's, what, that's it. That's, that's why it. you're here. I didn't ask and you. That's what we did the plan. That's what we, we submitted. And so we did a plan to the board. The only difference right now in the building is did not change the unit. They did not change anything else. They had to set a stairs from the second floor to the empty lot on the back that is my property. Basically, I'm not touching his property. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, ask you, uh, there were people here for librarians. Maybe they have some input on this. On the, on the staircase? On the, no, no, on the, on the original plan and, and, the, and the deeds that were given and everything. I mean, well, again, I only rely on professionals. The professional I rely on is Mr. Reed and another surveyor. They did they plan. I dealt with Attorney Keating. He drafted the agreements that were reciprocal. Those were recorded. They were recorded with plans. As Mr. Chisono said, we're here because, or Mr. Cole pointed out, because that staircase was added. We filed a plan that shows that staircase. Then the question was, if you, would you enclose it? The answer to that is, yeah. Now the question is, will you do two things as I understand it? Will you uh, give us a plan of what the enclosed staircase looks like? Because that's how I at least understand it. And the second thing, which is, can we draw a line where the property line is? And it, I, I don't have the expertise to do that. I'll go to the surveyor and tell him you want a line that goes, that shows apparently what the surveyor already shows on his plan, which is that the staircase is within the property line of the petitioner. So he can track that line and, 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 and show you where, where the staircase is. Correct. I don't think we were here for a, a, a zoning violation because the staircase doesn't count in terms of the 
sideline. I think it was here for what Mr. Cole said, that they wanted to see a plan that showed it. Right. So, and, and Sam, I agree with you 100%. So the long and short of this is the request for drawings is so that the board can understand the changes that were made. I'll ask the, Mr. Reed to do it. The impact, of, the impact to the building, because that's really what matters to us. It's not whether the staircase is there. We're not using it. It's, it's what's the impact to the building? What's, what's the look? Does it, does it, does it that's stick that's with what we were doing? Right. This, this, I can't speak to the property line question. It's not my, no, wasn't either. my thing, so I, I can't put that out there. There's, there must be a reason why Mr. Count is asking for it. He's been here a long time. No, no. He, he wouldn't ask for something that wasn't needed. So, again, ISD, the raise their hand. You guys are here for a reason. These are the things that we're asking you to do. If you'd like to do them, here's the Well, I'd like to ask Mr. Reed to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know what I'm saying. If you guys yeah. would like to conform with what we're I'd asking, like the we'll, see in, we'll see you in the next meeting. Right. Or if, if you want to take your ball and go home. Well, I, I want to see what Reed tells me in terms of what, what it takes to do it. I'm asking the board, though. I, I just want to go back to the original approval. Right. I'll take the cost from whatever I did already there, and i go back to the original approval. I'm, I'm off the same time, I want to make it clear, the stairs is the only holding on the building department. I already I spoke with the building inspector. He's aware that we're going back to the original approval and that will give me a release. Yeah, we don't, we really, the only reason was, as Mr. Cole said, they wanted to see a plan that showed where the staircase was. So we filed that plan and now you want to see two other things which is enclosed and draw the line. That we don't have, but now we found out about it. Uh, we knew about the enclosure. We didn't know about the line. I tried to meet Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed is away on vacation. Mm -hmm. I can at least ask him how difficult it would be. But I think if it's to the 17th, at least we have an opportunity to have him say yay or nay that he can draw the line. I think he could. But if he can't, well, why, would, why would you put that fence back? Because it's part of the, it's part of the reason to secure the building. And I'm going back to the same fence on the property respecting the original agreement that I have with them, that we have it in writing. I'm gonna keep all that agreement on place, but I am going back to- Yeah, we took down the fence. We took down the fence that was not there. Yeah. But it's the goalpost keeps moving, okay? So we took down the fence. I mean, we keep saying yes. You say you want to see a case enclosed? We say yes. You say, okay, then you want us to draw a line. I mean, at some point- You make a petition that you want the fence moved, we move the fence. It's costing me, every time that we move the fence, it's costing me money. Every time the asking for a like, we did. Do you want to always have to go forward? Yes, I am. Do I'm always going to go. Do you want to take a meeting? Well, listen, we're done. What is the wish of the board? We're, we're, we're done. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of other people sitting here waiting. We're, we're not going to bake it back and forth all night. What's the wish of the board? I don't know what I'm voting on. What are we voting on? It falls in your court. I mean, it doesn't sound like he, the petitioner wants to do anything. So. You can vote to deny, you can vote to withdraw, I mean, you can vote to I approve. I wish you and keep the fence back. You know, you took it down. Don't you think that's fair? I agree to keep the fence with a, a, a look. Definitely not put a fence back in if I get the approval to have the staircase on the outside. Because I've been working on, the, uh, on this. Well, you're not going to paint me into a no, corner I'm at all. That's definitely not how you're going to get a vote from me, so. You see, uh, I mean, see we're thinking the right way. I'm going to put the fence back where it is not in the way. I'm going back to the same way. original yeah. spot where the fence was no. original on no. was, when I bought the property. It was in the wrong area. Well, it's something that you're going to have to deal with. Surveyors and lawyers, no. it's not going to be my call. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do what it's supposed to be done. Just put my fence back and you deal with the EPA. Enough. That's Enough. Fine. What's the wish of the board? I'll make a motion to, to deny it. To deny the petition. I'll, I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Call the roll. Mrs. Crowitz. Agree to deny. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mrs. Crowley. What am I denying? Are you happy with the decision? I agree with that. What we approve. What we approve. There will be no, there will be no mysterious data. And that means you're going to put the fence back? Correct. But you said you're going to put it in the same place. The same exact spot with the same one. That's, you're not being fair to the above. Well, that's being fair to my end? No, right? What? 
No one being fair to me, and I have to give you land, but I already give you a piece of land that can cost fifty to a hundred thousand dollars on the original agreement. That I gave it that in writing. I agreed to the the college to agree what to did, it. What did you give? Explain what you gave. Well, you should have a copy of that yeah, agreement. There are two there are two areas. That's the title it's called. I don't have the agreement with me. If you can prove me that I, I signed. When I understand. Yeah. Can I speak? Yeah, you can understand me too. Okay, let me finish. Yeah. Yeah. If you can show me something that I'm not going to I'm not going to afford too much. Can you show me something in writing that you have that, that is two areas that I agreed to give you? Tell you what, right this isn't a bother session. I, I, I honestly don't care either way. And we're in the middle and of I the don't at this point because I can just go back. I just want the board to be Stop to talking. Stop anybody. talking. Sit down. Stop talking. We go into the same part. Again, sit down. Stop talking. Right. We're in the, call the roll. To deny Mr. Jasono, seconded Mr. Cole, Mr. Scott, Mr. said yes. Mr. Cole said yes. Well, I'm just going to have to go along with them because we're in an impasse here. I, I, I wish you would just leave the, put the, leave the fence away like it is and keep your staircase. That, I would be happy. Keep I'm happy staircase. to do that. And I say that. I'm happy to do that. That's what I will get. That's what they want. I removed the fence just to make them happy, to make them see it, that I was here to work with them. But I don't see that from that end coming to my end. It's not a question of whether I'm happy or not. It's public safety. Does well, that be that's not public? my call. If that's something that you need to prove me that it's a public thing, but that's, if that's something that I can get it right, that's, I'm happy to work for that. Um, we're not on that level yet. All the world. Mrs. Curley. Mr. Kellner. No, I'm not in favor of letting them off the hook. No to the guy? No, yes, I want, to, I want to do what we said he should do. Well, Mr. Cameron, you've got to do what, 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 we, what, what we originally gave him permission to do. Right. That's and the bottom line. That's what he's got to do. All right. I'll, I'll and that's what he's got to be held to. Change that vote. So you, yes, to the guy? Yes. Yes to the guy? Yes. 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 Petition is denied. Thank you. The next case this evening is 9896 29 Pine Grove Ave. By, um, by his petition of Modestin Salvin yeah. um, to allow the alteration of a pre existing single family structure into a, into a two family structure on a non conforming lot with less than the required area and the R2 district finding that. Such use is not substantially more detrimental. Um, and I should have said so earlier, this case is gonna be continued. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm not. Um, by the request of Mr. O'Malley, the attorney, please be advised that they represent Monstein, symbol petitioner in the above reference case. My client is unexpectedly unable to appear at the hearing scheduled for tonight. He wishes to present at the hearing to answer any questions that the board might have. I request a rescheduling on the hearing to October 1st. As it appears, there will be no meeting on September 3rd to allow the meeting date of September 17th. I will be out of state. So. Do I get to say anything? Because I'm going to post to this. I think you should at least listen to me since you made me sit here for an hour. First and foremost, I didn't make you do anything. I know you didn't make you do So I understand your frustration and I do apologize because, uh, you know, I should have said something up front. But, so you're opposed to this? I am. For what reason? Can you come up and give me a Yeah, come on up. I mean, you, got, you did sit here and I, I do apologize. So, you and I, and I 
and she, as soon as she just tapped me on the shoulder, I just, I just put, I, I was like, shit. I, I, so I do apologize. Street. My name is Robert Rasmussen. Our backyard's kind of a plot. He's kind of adjacent to me. You live on Woodland? I do. And every weekend, the music's blaring. The apartment's already rented and built. I don't know if he's supposed to already have it rented and built. I mean, because I, I downloaded an ad. He's got for their apartment. He rented it out in October. He's already got tenants living in there. The cops were there a week ago because the tenant couldn't get in his apartment because his wife or girlfriend wouldn't let him in. So he took his fist and smashed the windows in the back. And I, I don't make a lot of money. My backyard is my vacation area. Mm -hmm. I don't get to go on vacation. I can't enjoy my backyard because of that. And it's a major issue. Every weekend I gotta go over there and argue with them. Turn your radio off, turn your radio off. And then I've got little kids that come over, they play in my backyard because I have a pool. Now this guy's gonna be smashing his windows and yelling at his girlfriend or wife. The police were there, I just... Um, well, again, you know, my apologies for making you sit there. I empathize with your situation. The suggestion I have for you, you should go see ISD. Show yeah. them that ad, because it's, it's, a, it's a legal one family right now, so you absolutely do have actions you can take and They'll, they'll go out, so. They have. Oh, they have. They have. Oh, they have? ISD has been out there, there's a, a number of complaints that have been logged on this piece of property. I mean, sorry, so, Brent. That will all be addressed in, at the October 1st meeting. All right. I mean, I don't mean to sound frustrated. No, 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 no. I get it. And I don't blame you. Absolutely. <laughs> So you can see, right. you can see it. You know what I mean. It, it's yeah, been a tough night all around. So I, I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Give me a name for the secretary for uh, Robert. You're Rasmussen. I'm Rasmussen. Thank you. One thirty-five. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah. All right. So we're going to Oh yeah. Motion, uh, I'll make a motion to continue to October 1st. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Cole, seconded by the chair. Please call the roll. Mr. Williams, to continue? Mr. Cole, to continue? Yes. Mr. Cole, to continue? Yes. Mr. Callan to continue. Mr. Jusano to continue. Yes, to continue. October 1st. Thank you. Next case this evening will be case 9898314 Broadway. Patricia Timothy and Nancy Teeny to allow the use of an existing lot in the business district in the business district for storage related to activities at 314 Broadway to be located on land owned by the city of Lynn. There are no other continued cases, by the way. Everybody else still sitting there is going to be hurt, so just, just so you know. <laughs> I just want to build a little building there to store my uh, merchandise in. So that you, just to summarize, you, you, the city of Lynn has basically allowed you, given you an easement on this piece of property. Yes. Up in Wyoming Square next to the right. so. right. And they actually gave you, the, and they basically even stated on it that it was going to be for storage. Yes. The reason you're here is because storage isn't allowed in that district, so we have to get a variance. But it, right. it's clear that that's what they gave it to you for. Okay. Um, and a, a bunch of other conditions uh, maintain the area, keep it clean, which would be good. I do. Because if you're not going to do it, I don't know who else would do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all I got to say on that. And it's going to be, the outside is going to be the same as, as the... Like the front of the store, store. yes, oh. yes, same type of store. Yeah. That would be nice, clean yeah. up that area. It would be nice, yeah. Almost like a little yeah. light. Oh, yeah, there would be nice. Good plans. Yeah, it's going to be good plans. Thank you. Most of the photos of the area here. Most of the photos of the area. If you're not familiar with it, this would be a good idea. Yeah. Is there uh, any other questions of the board? Any other questions? Any guys, any questions? Seeing that there's none, I'll, I'll close. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Seeing that there are none, I'll close it for those in favor. Anybody opposed?
to this position, petition. Anybody opposed to this petition? Seeing that there are none, I'll close it for opposition. What is the wish of the board? Second. Motion made by Mr. Cowan and seconded by Mr. Cole. Please call the roll. Mrs. Carlos, the grant. I believe the grant. Mr. Cole, the grant. Yes. Mrs. Curley, the grant. Yes. Mr. Cowan, the grant. Yes, the grant. And Mr. Jusson, the grant. Yes, the grant. Good morning. The next case this evening will be case number 9891, 72 Empire Street. Um, look right now. Caleb Carrera, Vice Attorney Sam Vitale, to permit the alterations to a pre existing non conforming three family dwelling on a lot with less than the required area and right sideline in the business district to allow the replacement of the garage and construction of a two story addition to the dwelling. Finding that such does not result in more detrimental effect to the neighborhood. I'm Attorney Vitale. I was here the last hearing the board made requests of the uh, petitioner with regard to revisiting the plan to see if they could uh, change the configuration of the addition and reduce the size. I think it was the chairman who suggested that. Um, if you recall, we have this architect, David Harmon, who did work, it's been before the board in the past, and a couple of others. Um, he contacted me, I think Thursday, I contacted Miriam. He said he didn't think he would have the plan ready. I talked to the petitioner who said that there's no sense coming back unless we have the, a plan that reflects a reduced size, uh, both for the number of rooms and, and the size of the addition. I don't have that plan, so as an earlier request uh, made of you, if you could put this over, I think to the September 17th meeting, I explained to the architect, we'd have to have the plan by then. And then at least you could make a decision based on whether you're satisfied that uh, the proposed revision um, meets the concerns that you have. So you're looking for a continuance? Yes. So he's, he's looking to downsize what he was going to do? Well, there's two or three alternatives. If you recall, one of the alternatives is the removal of the pool. The other alternative is perhaps to remove the garage and, and make up a greater space and then try to add a smaller addition uh, to provide a a couple of added bedrooms, on, and it also involves the, the, the family members who are part of this extended families get mom and dad to move from the second floor to the first floor. So if those pieces come together, then it would make the first floor probably uh, unchanged. It would then uh, put an addition for the second and third floor, adding a couple of bedrooms on each of those floors. That, that, but I gave the uh, uh, architect three or four, I'm not an architect, I asked him to take and see what he could do. Can't make the lot any bigger. Um, but we could certainly make the addition small. Okay. Thank you, Sam. How many bedrooms are you talking about? Excuse me? How many bedrooms are I haven't seen the plan. I'd be speaking out of school. I did tell him that what the board's concerns were. And part of it was, and he suggested to me, that I think there are two existing bedrooms on the first floor, and that mom and dad live on the second floor, and perhaps they could move to the first floor. And then we could deal with the needs of the uh, other individuals who live in the building on the upper floors. It may also make some sense because uh, the parents are older and it would be easier for them to access the first floor. Any, any other questions of the board right now? I can see people are, are paying attention to this. Are you guys here? Any of you guys here in favor or in opposition to this? Anybody here in opposition to this? Anybody else here in favor of this first? Anybody else in favor? No? I'll close it for those in favor. Anybody here in opposition? You? Would you like to speak? My name is Dave McDermott. I live at 15 Jackson Street. My back fence backs up against theirs. We've had nothing but noise problems from this property since they moved in. Putting more people in there, I don't think you even know how many people are in there now. I don't think they do. Um, it's only going to increase the noise coming out of it. So we're we're not in favor of this happening. Okay. That, did you get, did you get his name? No, David. What is your name and address, please? David McDermott. I live at 15 Jackson Street. Thank you. Uh, there's another person, Roger Richard. He lives at 17 Jackson Street. He couldn't come here tonight. Luke? That was the guy who was here with me. Roger Richard. 
There's also a letter here from, from Councillor Sear uh, regarding 72 Empire Street. Dear Chairman Gisono, please be advised that I am not in support of the above mentioned petition to permit the alteration to the pre existing non conforming three family dwelling on the lot with less than the required area. Thank you in advance for your consideration, Darren Sear. So you're looking for a continuation, Sammy? He is making strides to bring it down, right? Because if, yeah. if he's not, we're not. I just okay. Yep, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. What is the wish yeah, of the board? So I just went on the, on the, well, there's been no motion yet, right? No, no. <clears throat> so, you know, I thought long and hard about this. I went back down there and that's a, that's a big house to begin with. And I, I personally agree with the counselor. So I'm not in favor, I'm not in favor of any addition at this point in time. So I'm not going to vote to continue it. Um, I've, like I said, I've, I've looked at it. Um, I've talked to other people uh, in Ward 3, other than Mr. McDermott, and uh, I just, I, 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 that's just me. I'm personally not going to support a continuation, but. So you make a motion to the I will make a what, motion. What is the wish of the board? So the, the floor's open, guys, whatever you want. Yeah, I'll make a motion to deny. I'll second the motion. M motion made um, by Mr. Cole, seconded by Mr. Wooten. So I'm just going to call the roll. Mr. Wooten to deny? Uh, yes. Mr. Cole to deny? Yes. Mr. Scurley to deny? Yes. Mr. Callan to deny? Right. Mr. Trisona to deny? Yes, to deny. Petition denied. We want to do it. Case number, the next case this evening is case number 9894, 559 French Street. Petitioner, Eliel. What's the, give me the last one. Why did you say the E-L-L-C? That would be, that's what I, I took the path of okay. least resistance. All right. All right. Petitioner, Sam Vitale, to allow to allow Delbrook Construction LLC use as contractor storage yard with open air capacity for the storage of building and construction materials on a 36,611 36, square foot lot in the central business di district for a period not to exceed two years. Um, with me tonight is Tim Dan, who's a manager for Delbrook Construction, um, and Alex Elfin, who's one of the principals of the uh, LLC that owns the land. Most people know this land, is, uh, at least I do, is the Blahos uh, produce. Uh, it backs up to a railroad track. I'm familiar with this because many years ago I came to the board of the city council and we built a four story building on uh, next to it on French Street. And then uh, I think it was uh, one of the elderly services built an extension. And I'm very familiar with it. I'm certain members of the board. This building is on a corner, so it's a corner lot on the corner of Silsby. Uh, and friend. And and for most years, there was a railroad siding, it was Lajos, produce came in and out, um, and and previously it had been an industrial use. Uh, the city zone map has this property in the central business district. Central business district doesn't allow uh, any form of a contractor's yet. What we're talking about, the zone ordinance defines two kinds of contractors yet. One in which people have equipment like landscaping equipment and trucks and caterpillar tractors and you know construction equipment and the other is uh, the storage of materials building materials so what this is a request is for milled materials and i'll explain to you why in a second um, the uh, so the city council has granted a permit previously for residential use that didn't get uh, carried out time so the lot is there the lot is a, a large lot, it's on that corner. Uh, as people are aware, uh, progress is being made in the city of Lynn, and much construction is going on. The problem is, in, in terms of construction, the building next to mine being built is a four-story building, and they have what's called a bump out, because they can't, it's so much, so tight a space to build on, they have to like bump out to the sidewalk so they can bring in the equipment to do the high-rise four-story building. Next street over on Monroe Street, there's a 10-story building. Same thing, it used to be a community guy. And so, if you look at that street, there's a bump out on Oxford Street that's sort of limited to one lane. So, th those are the kinds of parcels that are being <coughs> developed, which will bring added revenue to the city, bring hopefully 
uh, new people to live in the downtown. But to do that, you have to build a building. To build a building, uh, I'm learning, um, you need what they call lay-down space, okay? And the way they build these buildings nowadays is, it's, they didn't like it when I said it, but it's sort of like Legos to me, okay? <laughs> because what it does is uh, sections come and then they deliver the section and then they assemble it and then they put it up and then they put the next one up and it, that's why, I, to me, it looked like Legos, okay? But as it was explained to me, it's not quite that simple, okay? These things come, uh, and again, for reasons not known to me, when they deliver goods, they put the biggest pieces on the bottom of the truck. They put, and they sort of build like a pyramid. So when you get the pieces, it's not in the order in which you assemble them. So you need a place to lay them down and, you know, connect number one, number two, get the right package and then bring it to the site, put it up, and then they tell me they pour concrete, you probably got Dan and, and, and Pat would probably, they pour concrete, okay, then they set that, and then they bring the next one. So, Delbrook is engaged in that kind of a process. They need a place to lay down space. So, I, I have had experience, I met with Mr. Donovan in the past, people have these like storage containers, and you'll see there's one on the corner of Fayette and Essex, or several. Um, there's one not far from here on Liberty Street at the back of the dry cleaning place. It says, it's quote, a temporary storage container. So I don't think temporary should be forever. And that's why I put in uh, not to exceed like two years. I've talked with the law department and they, they, they are more stringent than I. And I understand that they want not more than one year. I talked with the people who are involved in this construction process and they say they need maybe nine months, okay? So uh, rather than just go do it, I thought uh, the better way is to A, get your approval, B, there's an agreement with certain stipulations between the parties that the land be insured, the land be plowed, the land be uh, maintained, that it be secured, which is all of our improvements, uh, which the construction company would undertake because it's their materials. They don't want somebody climbing over the fence and, and walking off of it, okay? So there'd be better security, uh, there'd be probably better maintenance, and it's, this is how they describe it to me, that uh, perhaps four trips in a week of these tractor trailers, so we showed you from a drone the access, and I asked this question myself, uh, why do you want the access uh, at the corner of Friend and uh, Silsby? The answer was two reasons. First of all, there's a railroad right away, believe it or not, that's 50 feet wide off Friend Street that no one can change, that the MBTA apparently has the right to cross that land to access those tracks that go for the train line that are behind the building. So, so no one can deal with blocking that, all right? And the second is the reality is that not now, but during school year, during school hours, especially from like 7.45 to 8.45 uh, and from like 1.45 to like 3.45, the street's one way, French Street's one way towards Silver. So they can operate within that perimeter and the agreement between the, the principals is that um, during City of Lynn school year and during school hours, there shall be no access on uh, French Street. And, but the city wanted that memorialized, so I, t I tell you that, I don't know whether they sent you that. Okay, uh, but that was my understanding from that. And then the second was, I, I wanted to see how often this occurred. So it was, it was explained to me, four times a week a tractor trailer comes in, they unload the pieces, biggest to smallest, off the truck, people assemble them, they have like a template. It's like, again, to me it's like Legos. They take piece one and they put it with piece two and they get it ready. It goes back on a truck, goes to a construction site. And, and so at four times, so you're really talking maybe a maximum of eight trips in a five day week, all right? One in, one out, all right? And it would just be to, until the building, they get these sections in. And so the second limitation would be, as I said, and I, I talked to the city about, and they're agreeable, it would be a limitation on time. It's not forever, okay? But I think you're gonna find increasingly, because as you look at the downtown, there aren't many sites that are suitable for this purpose that is consistent with the overall goal, which is to 
uh, bring investment and build these buildings in the city and try to do it safely and with a minimum of disruption to the traffic. And so a way is to take and store this stuff somewhere until you need it, bring it. Then when you bring it, it goes right times money in the construction wall. So you bring it to the site, they put it in. And so what we're asking for is a limited period of time. It's really to allow this use. It would be a storage of materials. As far as a, there was a, maybe uh, Tim can tell me that I couldn't understand. What's the name of that one piece of equipment that takes it off the truck and puts it on the truck? A uh, log or a forklift to shake up. Okay, shows you what I know. <laughs> a forklift, okay. I thought it was something elaborate. But, so it takes it off the truck and puts it back on the truck. So how high is the material to be stacked? How high, how high is the fire? I don't know the answer to that. Just because so, it, the mural festival just ended, so you could put this stuff for the back, you know, blocking the building that has the mural on it. Right. right. So, the, so the material itself, the stacking material, would be stacked no higher than the way you see like a storage container, essentially. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think you mentioned that the original yeah. storage containers would be stacked no higher than the way you see like a Um, oh, it's Timothy D A N N yep. Delbra Construction in Quinty. Yep. Sam, does that does that wrap up your? your yes. Your I haven't seen any of the. Oh, letters. you haven't seen the letters. I, oh, you have I have. A, I have. A, I have a. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Sam, I'm going to give you. Anybody else in favor of this petition? Seeing that there are none, I'll close it. Um, there's a few letters here. One from um, Council President Sear. Dear Chairman Jasano, please be advised that I I write this correspondence as the president um, president of the Lynn City Council in support of the above stated petition for variance 55 through 59 French Street for permission to utilize the land as a contractor yard with stipulations. The temporary variance will facilitate construction of a major development in the central business district. Excuse me, after consultation with the law department, I urge the zoning board of appeals the above these requests for variance with the following stipulations. One, the variance will be limited to one year in duration, commencing on the date of the expiration of the appeals period as provided. Prior to, prior to the issuance of the variance, the petitioner shall execute a separate record instrument acknowledging that the variant shall expire one year from the date of expiration of the appeal period as provided. This recordable instrument shall have separate legal significance and shall be drafted in form as approved by the city solicitor. Three, the use of the property for a contract yard shall be solely limited to Delbrook Construction LLC or its subcontracting agents and employees and no other person, individual, corporation, partnership, or legal entity may utilize the property as a contract yard. The primary access to the premises for the life of this variance shall be through the gate at the corner of Silbacy and, Silbacy and French Street. Five, at all times during the life of the variance, the property shall be well maintained and free of debris. Six, at all times during the life of the variance, the property and abutting sidewalk shall be free of snow as provided, as provided by City of Lynn ordinances. The petition, seven, the petitioner shall be permitted to store materials on the premises, including without limitation stacked shipping containers during the life of the, the variance. Eight, hazmat storage shall not be allowed on the premises. Nine, Traffic shall be limited on French Street during the City of Lynn academic year for 30 minutes before and after the opening of Lynn Public Schools. 10. No vehicles associated with the use as a contract yard shall be parked on the City of Lynn Public Ways. 11. There shall be no excessive noise emanating from the property during the life of the variance. In conclusion, I support the granting of the above reference variance provide these stipulations and conditions are uh, contained therein. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Council President Darren Sear. There's also a letter here from the EDIC. Dear Chairman Gisano and Board of Appeals, Delbrook Construction LLC French Street petition requests. I write in support and respectfully request you and your fellow colleagues approve 
concerning the above caption items. The short-term use of this proposed lot will be enabled to continue construction of an $80 million plus investment currently underway by the Procopio companies on, the Monroe, on Monroe Street. I have the opportunity to review and discuss the matter with the parties involved and look forward to the new development project becoming a critical asset to the heart of the downtown land. In advance, thank you for your attention to this matter and for all continued partnership we share moving forward in the city of Lynn. Besides those letters, is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? In favor? Seeing that there are none, I'll close the hearing for those in favor. Is there anybody wishing to speak in opposition to this petition? Anybody wishing to speak in opposition to this petition? Seeing that there are none, we close the hearing. What is the wish of the board? Uh, I, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to talk, get an opinion from uh, Mr. Vitale and uh, the people from the construction company. Is there anything on those um, 11 conditions that, that, that needs to be discussed or that you have an issue with? So then, if they, so you don't mind that we could incorporate those into the decision? Yeah, yeah you can incorporate them. Okay. okay. Then I'll make a motion to to grant um, with the stipulations that are provided by um, the city council president and. Uh, <coughs> motion made and seconded, including all. I think it's ten. I'll let all 11 stipulations outlined by the City Council. Please call the roll. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Sparrows, uh, with all the 11 stipulations to grant, yeah, to grant with stip, yeah. Mr. Cole, to grant with the stipulations for the City Council President. Yes. Mrs. Curley, to grant with the stipulations. Mr. Callum, to grant with the stipulations. Yes. Mr. Chisano, to grant with the stipulations for the City Council President. Yes. Motion granted. Yep. The next case this evening is case 9895, Three Style Street, petition of David F. Wall by his attorney Sam Vitale to allow the reconfiguration of a 12,354 square foot lot in the R2 General Residence District into its original configuration lot 14, lot 14,000, what does that say? Lot 14, 5,000 square feet frontage, 50. Sam, what is that supposed to be? 14, 14, 5,000? What is that? There are two lots. Okay. There's one that's lot 14. Oh, okay. It has 5,000 5, square feet. Okay. Square feet. Sorry. okay. It has 50 feet of frontage on one side of the corner and 100 on the other. Okay. okay. So that lot um, is separate on a recorded plan from. Lot 15, which has 7,000 something, but only has 50 feet of frontage. Yeah, 7,354 square feet and 50 feet of frontage. Single family home to be constructed there, and thank you for clearing that up, Sam. Okay. Well, I can understand the confusion, and I was confused when uh, I first uh, saw this matter because the board approved a single family house in 2005, and I think I attached a copy of its approval. And I understand, Mr. Wall was here by himself. Okay, and he did fine. Um, at that time, the board asked him to bring uh, a copy of what he proposed to do. Mr. Reed did a plan. The plan that Mr. Reed did was submitted to the board. The board approved it. And then Mr. Wall couldn't afford to do it and didn't, in my judgment, didn't do a time. Okay, notwithstanding that, um, recently when he went to the building department, they told him he could get a building permit but um, he inquired of Mr. Reed and of me, and Mr. Reed and I both agreed that we thought uh, to, to perfect the title of this, that uh, something should have been done that wasn't done. And that something that should have been done that wasn't done is to protect his existing house and lot. Now I can understand there's a state statute that says if you have a 5,000 square foot lot and 50 feet of frontage, it's a buildable lot. So in 1960-something, I think your house was built 50s, in the 50s. So it was built on a lot of 5,000 square feet, 50 feet of frontage. But now, uh, the, when the assessors, the assessors operate, if you, I think you know this, if you own lot A and you own lot B, 
they give you, and I think I put the assessor's map in, a bill, one tax bill, for lot C, they combine it. But beyond that, the state statute says that if you have a non-conforming lot, so let's look at the 5,000 square foot lot. Why is it non-conforming? Because A, it's not 10,000 square feet, and B, on one side, it only has 70, it doesn't have 75 feet of front. So I didn't want to imperil the lot that's at 3 Style Street with a house on it that's been there since the 1950s. So I think that when Mr. Wall came here in 2005, he was dealing with the adjoining lot, which is on this recorded plan, which is, I think, the Harrison New Hall Estates. It's lot 15. It's 7,000 something. I think I've included that plan that shows that lot. The problem with that lot is that it doesn't have 10,000 square feet. So the reason he came here, as is that variance said that was granted back in 2005 by this board, it was to build a house on a lot with less than the required frontage and less than the required lot size. So that was approved. But in my judgment, why, and Mr. Greed, I think, agreed with me, why it wasn't complete, it sort of left exposed this other lot that the existing house is on, because the state statute says you can't, um, you, you can have such a buildable lot with 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage, provided it's not held in common ownership uh, with the adjoining piece. Mr. Wall's mom and dad first bought one piece that one his house is on, bought the other piece. They then now the Wall family owns the first lot and the second lot. Mom and dad pass on. His brothers and sisters deed him the property. The deed says he has parcel one, parcel two, parcel one's got the house on it, parcel two's this lot. I think the problem is that it is in common ownership. He owns one. He owns two. And so typically I would come here and say, reconfigure the lots, and then I would go to the planning board and get a plan so if he were to deed out his house or to deed out this lot, uh, people could identify. But there is a plan. It's a recorded plan. Neither you nor I can change that plan at the registry of seats. It's been, it's been like the 1800s. All of those lots in that area were on this plan. Harrison Newhall Estates. He owned all the land. And you can see these two adjoining lots. But they came into, at one point, the same ownership. And when they came into the same ownership, the rules had changed about lot size, about frontage. He, so sort of, well, I think the relief that the board gave him and that he got in 2005 was like half of what he really needs to do it right. And so I think the safer and better course is to come back here now I asked about the plan because the board inquired back then um, and I wanted to see and I have only Mr. Reed's plan from back then that showed a house at the back of the lot and that plan is here. And so this plan I will tell you for the proposal, you see it doesn't show his house. It just, it just says he owns it but it doesn't show his house. This is a corner lot. This foundation is bigger than what is now proposed. And secondly, it's further back. The lot is of sloping topography. And so a, he didn't have, as far as I know, a building plan when it got approved by the board in 2005. So now there is a building plan that takes into account the sloping grade, is a smaller house shown on the current plan that Mr. Reed provided with respect to the smaller footprint, brings the house closer to Perkins, provides and shows you the parking, uh, two required off-street parking spaces. And so what we're just trying to do is uh, take sort of like a picture out of focus, which was the earlier approval, and put it in focus, have no misunderstanding. So when he goes to the building department, it's to build a smaller house in that location uh, on that adjoining lot. Uh, but I will tell you, Mr. Donovan gave an opinion it's a build of the lot. Mr. Reed and I just don't agree for the reasons I've outlined to you. And we'd rather be safe than sorry. So, uh, Jim, I had a question. So this, this house, it, it, there was a, there will be a, the, uh, the, as you talked about the elevation. So the house on Style Street, and there'll be a, there's a wall behind that. And so yeah, there was a shed, I think, that's got to be removed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but it would be make it better use of the land, be better than what was approved in 2005, I think is the current plan. A smaller house 
closer to the street with two off street parking shown and removal of the shed, opening up more space. Yeah, my, 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 one concern when I look at it is, like you, know, you say the deck to be re relocated, you're really not gonna have much room. In fact, you know, how much room could you, what kind of a deck could you put on the back of the house? It can't be higher than four feet. But, but what, what's the, uh, as far as the setback? Well, I think there's a plan there, uh, and I think Mr. Reed did a current plan. Let me find the current plan. No, if they were, if someone was to rebuild the deck, how close would they be able to go to the, to the real property line? A, 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 an attached deck doesn't count in terms of, you see, I think on Reed's plane, he's got a lot of coverage. So we're not, we still, it's open space to the rear. In fact, moving the house forward, we have more than 15 feet rear space. And the other part of this is um, that for his house, he's got two fronts, because he's on the corner of Stiles and he's on the corner of a Perkins. So he's got like two fronts, all right, which affects the, the dimensions. This one has frontage along Perkins, but I thought that moving the house forward, as I said, uh, dealt with the, the, the topography of the sloping land and also provided more space at the rear, especially if we remove the uh, existing shed. And I think Reed did a plan that reflected that. So then my second question would be, is, is this going to impact the drainage and uh, the way it will be situated there, is that going to have any effect on the drainage down to, to south? When, when you get a building permit, you have to get permission from the water and sewer, which is called storm water management. And the way they deal with that is they compel you to either have a roof leader that goes like to a French drain, or you have to drain away from the, uh, the grade that would run onto somebody else's property. There is existing sewage on the street. I did inquire about that. So there's, there's no need to install new sewage. It's just to get it from the home out to the street. Right. You can't send water downhill, right? It creates a nuisance. Yeah, right. That's right. So you can change the grade on that. At the rear, it goes sort of this way. And if you look at this, the, the plan, we account for that by moving the house forward, building it uh, so when you can see from the side. And I think that in terms of, um, as I said, I think for many reasons, this is a, first of all, it's a better plan because we didn't have a plan before. And it's a better plan because it's a smaller home. And the last part of it is, I think it reflects more accurately than the footprint you had in 2005. Uh, I have a the question. And I'm speaking for myself only. And is there any reason why you couldn't push the house to the right a little bit, heading further down? There Perkins? is a reason. My, I think that to to increase the eight foot dimension, just to. to I think the reason is on really? the side. There's a wall. Is there you, a small wall? You've got wall? 22 here and eight here. If you went this way, let's say to 12, you know, something like that. Be just to, to give more room between the two properties. I believe because that I mean, easily, yeah. 22 feet to me is, is, a, is a pretty yeah. fair distance. So if we, if, if from my point of view, if, if you grab some of that and just kind of shifted the house down per, a little further down Perkins Street, okay. it would you want just going that way. Yeah, I want them going in inboard a little bit more. Just gives yeah. a little bit more room. Sure. So if you know, for you and for whoever's yeah. going gonna to be in that house that. On, on the sides. Um, yeah. yeah. Just you know, something that I see. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that, but I don't know. I'm, 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 kind of, I'm kind of fighting with that in my head right now. I was hoping somebody else would jump in and have an opinion. Maybe, maybe 15 feet, 12 to 15. Yeah. It's yeah. Is that ledge there? Do you think there's any ledge where you're proposing your foundation? No, I thought we brought it forward to try to avoid. Well, if there is, you're not going to handle it. Right. How many bedrooms in the house are you going to build? Three. Three? Do you have no plans? Uh, you have to show us the inside of the house you're going to look like. And the Board of Appeals has, uh, according to Section 40A, Section 3, has no authority over the interior of a single family home. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but, but I'm telling you that as far as what's required, I'm just telling you what the state law and zoning is. I was saying it was required, but I asked if he had it. Hmm? I was saying it was required, and I asked if he had it. No. And what are these, who are these plans drawn by who? 
Gabe Whitecliffe. He says nothing on it. No name. He doesn't put his name on there, but it's, uh, I think it's Mr. Whitecliffe who can yeah, recognize. Yeah, be quiet. But we'll get a plan D that has his name on it. Yeah. should have his name on Okay. So what's your intention with this? Basically get permission, get tickets and plan the rooms and then sell the lot? Well, no, it's to see if we can build that house. Build house. Yeah. We didn't have a, he didn't have any plan. When he wanted to do it the last time, he didn't have the funds. So you're going for the actual build. You're not just going well, to we've got, get we've the got build that house. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, yeah. just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would make sense. I mean, any other questions of the board? Good idea. Yeah. Any other questions of the board right now? So, Yes, that's a, that that's that. Except Mr. Sona wants to move over. Right, and I agree. So that's the right thing to do. No, it's a good, it's a good looking. I mean, the front elevation is a, is a is a nice looking house. Right? You talking yeah. the full basement here? Um, I think he's going to the part of the basement because of that. He didn't want to go back down to the exactly where it falls off at the rear. If you look at the side elevation, I am looking for the side. I think it shows the basement, but just limited onto that one portion. You see the foot? Uh, you get no, no, like I, 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 but I think the footing is like right there. I think it's going to be TBD on what you hit in the ground there, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah I think this way. Right. I'm sure yeah. there is somewhere. Yeah. 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 Any other questions of the board? Thank you, Sam. Okay. Seeing that there are none. I, I'll give you back the turn. I'll okay. open it for anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition. I have a concern. I have a kind of concern. Are you in favor or opposed? Use questions, kind of? Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'd be okay with the concerns. You know, with the okay, let me, let, me, let me go to the uh, in favors and then we'll, we'll go to you as an undecided for a minute. Well, I, I want to be clear. What's what, I'll tell you about that. What, what are you? What are you? What are the questions? Okay. So Again, we'll I live at 31 Perkins Street. What is your name? Wayne Taylor. You got that? Right across. Yep. The street. Um, Where the driveway is going to be. Right. So so my you know David's been a good friendly neighbor for 35 years. I don't want to hurt him in, in his efforts to try to develop his property. But I am concerned about the location of the drive. Why you want to see? Because after 35 winters here, it, it's a difficult spot. Now, so I, my my intention was to ask you, reason the access to the property could be from Style Street, maybe on his further down Style Street line, as opposed to the first. I just I honestly am here to tell you I think it's a treacherous spot. I come on my drive and turn left, the street winters down 12 feet. 10 feet, and all the snow banks. It's a steep part in the hill, and the hill turns there. I, I, I've expressed this to David, honestly, before, and even again tonight. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to David developing this property. I don't think a new house property done is going to hurt anybody, but I think it helps that anymore, to be quite honest. And, and David's been a good neighbor, a good friend of the neighbor for 35 years. That's but cool. I, so I don't have a concern about the driveway. I don't know how many of you look at it, but you know, I just see it as being a difficult spot. So I'm just asking you to look at that to see if reasonably the access to the property might be made on this through the lines, one side, it's off a nice flat street, as opposed to a steep part of the hill where the hill turns, and where the street narrows at 8 to 10, 12 feet with snow banks. I mean, it's only 19 and a half to 20 feet south. And it, and it really gets narrower than the hill. It's steep and turns to the right, right to the driveway. So that, I'm expressing my concern. I think I like that he's a good neighbor. Again, I think the new house is right. And I think when the property comes to that lot, it's not a Thank you. Uh, OK. Thank you. And that's as long as it can be. Um, Thank you very much. Let me ask you a question. Is there a curb cut for this driveway required? A what? You're going to need to do a curb cut for this driveway? Or is the driveway already locked? Like, there's no sidewalk, there's no That's what I'm asking, so there's... That, that was, that's why we kept the to this nope. side. That was, that's it, no, thank you. That was just, just a question. Yeah. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, you know, the last is... Um, what is your name and address? Uh, 
two in one side streets. Okay. So the backyard is in next to his backyard. Yeah. He's gonna build the house and chains. Yes, sir. It's always like when I go out, I said, "Hey, there's small ones and trees there, so all the time." So better for me to see like nice house there, you know, nice backyard. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Anybody else in favor of this petition? Submit there or not, I'll close the hearing. For those in favor, you're not in favor? <laughs> you want to give your name? Me, Sandy yeah. Center. You have that? I would like to say one thing. Absolutely. You know, he works at the Gannon Golf Course and he drives um, a truck. And he does keep the neighborhood nice and clean for all the neighbors within the area. After the plows might not make their way up. You know, so it's, you know, close to family, we, we plow up the hill, which I know where he's talking about his concern. They will come down and clear that path, clear all the sides, and he lives right around the corner. And he also makes sure that, you know, the street coming up and around for everybody is clear. You know, because there are a lot of elderly people within the neighborhood and children. So, you know, I'm sorry. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Could I ask, um, yep. and I'm asking, yes. you know, I'm not here to no. if that driveway has to go with the company that, that uh, Where it's proposed, brought yep. the access to the car. Now, there's a strip of one street that's sitting in, it's green, you know, that the state, it's nice for our neighborhood. We're working at the green neighborhood. So I'd like to make sure that piece of green space stays there. And the only other thing I'm well, if it, I'll, I'll tell you if it's the cities, it has to stay there, so. All right. <laughs> the only other thing I'm asking, if it's part of, again, I'm concerned yeah. about the, mm -hmm. the driveway and the safety. Um, if the driveway cannot reasonably put someone else, if it can reasonably be put someone else, then I would ask, it's a possibility that that section of the street could be taken to the flag as an old party any time. Different departments, sir. Unfortunately, okay, well, no. I'm not trying to be a wise guy. It's just, it's just no, not. Our, that's not something we can. We can. Right, but I just want to explain to yeah. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. I'm my own neighborhood. I, I believe that. I'm here because I empathize with you. Believe me. If there's a car park on the street, you don't need to get up and down. In the street now, you have much, and the problems do the best they can. I understand the best they can. But we do lose four feet inside and then we don't see. It becomes very narrow. Thank you very much. I'll close it for those in favor. Anybody in opposition? Sam. Anybody in opposition to the petition? Sing it there or not. I'll close it for those in opposition. What is the wish of the board? I'll, I'll, I'll second it, but I, I, I would like to put the stipulation on it, moving the house to 15, to 15 feet on the left side. Um, I would like to ask the board, does anybody have an issue with me moving forward with the vote pending that they get this drawing, new plot plan to us before the here, before the 28 days is up? Does anybody on the board have an issue with that? The only thing I would like to see is the other two sides of the property. Okay. You know, we got half a house here, just out of curiosity. Just like this. Again, do you have, do you have an issue with that on the, on the 28th or do you want to, you want to hold it over? So do you understand what? Sam, so you understand what we're asking for. We want to see the updated plot plan showing the 15 feet. We'd like to see the right and, the right and rear elevation of the house. I, I believe we're going to vote for it. And you just got to just please get those to us before the period's up. For the records. For the records. Is that, because I have to stamp them, so I want to stamp them complete. So we'll, we, we won't hold you up another month if it is approved, but. Is that, fair? Is that that suitable for you guys? Call the roll. Yes. Mr. Wilton. Yes, to again. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, again. Sorry. We're looking at it. Mr. Cole. Yes. Sorry. Mrs. Curley. Yes. Mr. Callan. Yes. And Mr. Jusson. Yes, to grant. Petition has been granted. With the stipulations. Okay, last case this evening is Case number 9893, 7 Jackson Terrace. Thank you, thank you. 7 Jackson Terrace, petitioner Bethany Adams. Anybody here for Jackson? 
No, thank you guys. Continue. Thank you. To permit the construction of an addition, it's a new case. Anybody have an issue with continuing it? We continue. We'll continue. We'll continue. The eyes, everybody continue. No issue. We'll continue. Yes. So that concludes the meeting. Second. Second.